President De Janeiro, Ms. Frame, Marymount University lecturers, TAs, and staff for your tireless efforts in running USAVO this year and bringing back in-person camp. And thank you, my fellow finalists, for being the closest of friends and companions for these past 12 days. For me, use of O was a solitary pursuit for most of my high school career. Many long nights, I poured over Campbell, taking pages of notes on a Google Doc till my computer started overheating and sputtering. I love the pictures of sharks, plants, insects, although some of my fellow finalists may disagree, and spent many days pouring over plant cross sections till my eyes started blurring. At the same time though, I long for a community of fellow biologists. Coming into finals this year, I was excited about the hands-on experiences with dissections, assays, and microbiology, but it is you, the community, that motivated me to stay up till 3 a.m. every day and then go to a lecture the next morning, excited to pull the mouth parts off a decades-old grasshopper. <laughs> I've never been more sleep deprived, and yet I've never felt more relaxed and at ease. The classes have been stellar. For example, for example Kevin's population genetics lecture the equations ran circles around my brain, but he was so enthusiastic, cracking jokes at every turn and writing 100% sound mathematical proofs that I listened to with rapt attention the whole time. Each lecture, I felt plunged into deeper and deeper waters, but even as I was shaking, sinking, I felt buoyed upwards by the energy and passion of every lecturer and fellow finalist. From Sophie's first dissection to Julianne, Olivia, and I's first admittedly questionable attempt at ecology questions, Kemp has pushed us in ways we never thought we'd be pushed, making us better scientists and thinkers in the process. And yet, I expected this. I anticipated and was excited for these scientific experiences. What I wasn't expecting, though, was talking with Peter until 2 or 3 a.m. on the second day of camp discussing utilitarianism. Those bedtimes just kept getting late. Those bedtimes just kept getting later. The conversation was more interesting. Some days, it was games of suspenseful paranoia, figuring out who would be the next investment banker. Other days, games of coup where we all turned to, into professional liars. One day, Amber, Olivia, and I sat in an empty room and just talked, sharing our drama, joys, and struggles. The clock hands ticked on, first to one, then to two, then to three, and we were still talking. Looking back, I've met some of the most cheerful, compassionate, and brilliant people in these past 12 days, slipping free of the stresses and worries that surround me in daily life. It is ironic, perhaps, that at such a high pressure, high intensity camp, I felt so relaxed and connected to those around me. But in the end, it is not surprising nor ironic. So many of us have sought community, friendship, and trust within the turmoil of high school. And here, bonded by our shared interest in biology, we have found it. And then that day, sitting in G207, my neurons were getting all tangled up as Albert talked about linkage to equilibrium. Suddenly, Jasper rushed in and said in the scariest voice I've ever heard him use, everyone, back to your dorms now. And suddenly, I was plunged back into the spring of 2020. Everything was so eerily similar. The feeling of being trapped by these cinder block walls, the constant hand washing, the trepidation as I watched the fluid crawl up each COVID test. But this time was different. Immediately, all the vibrancy of this community transferred online. So many voice calls, FaceTimes, and games of risk where my impregnable defenses were torn to shreds by the armies of Aditya. From Ms. Frame organizing our brief but beautiful session of nature drilling, to Grayson announcing lecture water cycle every hour, <laughs> to Kevin and Bella eagerly discussing lectures during our entomology lecture, we have found ways to not just cope, but flourish in the most useable way possible. Ultimately, what makes camp come alive is a collaboration. The exchange of ideas between so many budding scientists and brilliant mentors I remember reading about velvet worms and singlophorids in campal biology, but at camp, we had the opportunity to hear about them firsthand from Dr. Gonzalo 
Jiribat. We learned cutting edge bioinformatics from Dr. K. All and worked with each other to navigate these new softwares. And then the nights clustered in the lounge or on Zoom where we tackled, groaned, but persisted through impossible problem sets. After just 12 days of camp, I realized that we, all of us, have soared above the tumultuous waves of COVID and challenge because of our willingness to engage in communion, our willingness to sit down and teach each other the distinctive characteristics of stomach tissue, our eagerness to debate the institutions of religion versus science late at night in an empty dorm room, our belief in each other and the power of this community to lift us to heights we never dreamed about before. Soon, this special place of useful national finals will end. It is my fervent hope, however, that we keep in touch and carry on the traditions of camp into all of our future pursuits, not just our wide-eyed curiosity and passion in science, but our eagerness to seek out like-minded individuals so that we tackle the problems in society together, surrounded by friends and with a determined smile on our faces. In closing, thank you all once again for an unforgettable camp experience, and let us go forward with all the curiosity, confidence, and camaraderie that camp has nurtured in us. Thank you.